Hello, this video is to provide a little bit of support in terms of working through the geometry of the fractal tree lab. Um, and related to that is working through what parameters are needed in the method header um, as well. Uh, there are many ways to draw fractal trees. I'm just uh, walking through the geometry of one particular approach. It is certainly not the only approach. Uh, this is just an approach that students have found relatively uh, straightforward, or at least more straightforward than, than some of the other approaches. Um, in terms of presenting and deriving the geometry related to figuring out how to draw these branches, I'm not going to start with like the trunk, which you can think of as the first branch, or these first two branches. Um, I'm going to focus specifically on drawing this branch, um, and in fact, I'm gonna draw that in a different color to make it easier to tell like that's the one that we are focused on. All right, so we are focused on drawing the green branch here um, as we go. Um, and the reason for that, the reason why I'm starting with that branch is that it's easy to be misled by some of the simplifications that come for a vertical branch or, or the second generation branch here. Um, this one is a, is a little bit more complicated and the algorithm we develop can be a, a generic algorithm. Um, let's focus on a particular method header um, that provides the following four parameters. And for each parameter, I'm going to annotate the drawing to show um, where it is. Think of it as we the draw fractal method has just been called. We are going to, our responsibility in the method is to draw the green branch and then to recursively call the draw fractal method to draw the two branches that start at the end of the green branch as well. So there'll be two recursive calls inside this draw fractal method with the approach that I'm, I'm walking through today. So first parameter um, is the X coordinate of the start of the branch. Okay, so this point right here passed to the fractal tree method is that X coordinate. The second parameter is perhaps not surprisingly, the Y coordinate. So this point right here is the Y coordinate. Okay. So two of the parameters give us the starting point of the line we're trying to draw. The third parameter is the length of the branch to draw. And that is the length of this um, green branch. And I'm gonna use a script L to represent the length of that branch in my diagram. And the fourth parameter is the angle. And in terms of the geometry of, of using um, the, our, our sine and cosine methods and, and Java in general, um, zero degrees is um, at the horizontal. So here is zero degrees here, um, and increasing as we go as we go that way. Um, so the angle is actually the angle relative to the horizontal here. So I'm gonna draw a little dash here and label that this is the angle, and I'm gonna use the theta, the symbol theta, for that angle here. Given these four pieces of information, we now have three things we have to do in this recursive method. And I'm not gonna worry about the terminating condition. You can, you can add that in when the length gets smaller than whatever value you want. The three things we need to do in the normal recursive case is to figure out what is this coordinate here? What is this x2, y2 point? Because we need that point in order to draw the line between those two points. Okay. That's the first thing we need to do, and then we need to actually draw that line, um, you know, G2 draw and pass that line 2D dot double reference. Um, then we also need to calculate what, per, what arguments we're gonna pass to the draw fractal method that we call recursively to draw the next two branches. But let's do the first part first, which is to figure out what is X2 um, and Y2 so that we can draw this, this line. Um, so I'm gonna switch colors here and I'm gonna draw the, the horizontal and vertical components um, that make up the line, the green branch line that we're trying to draw. So let's do that. So now we have a right angle here. 
If we can solve for the sides of this right triangle, then we can calculate what x2 and y2 is because we already know the point x, y. Okay. So using some right triangle trigonometry, we know the length of this horizontal side, the horizontal component here is gonna be the hypotenuse L times the cosine of theta. And the vertical component um, using our right triangle trigonometry is a hypotenuse L times the sine of theta. Now, do remember that the point zero, zero, try to keep this in our diagram, is like somewhere over here. Okay? So keep that in mind in terms of the Java coordinate system. The reason why that is important, I think I didn't draw that in the video. Let's put zero, zero here so it's in the video. So the reason why it's important to remember where the origin is is because that affects how we calculate x2 and y2 based on x and y and the length uh, of the components of, of this right triangle. Um, so in this case, we would add L cosine theta to the value of x to get x2, but this is a common mistake. We would subtract L sine theta from y1 to get y2. Um, you may be asking, well, what happens for branches like over here and things like that um, as theta gets, you know, greater than 90 degrees? Um, just try it like this first. You may be pleasantly surprised how this, how this all works, works out. Um, the second thing I want to mention is I said there were two other things we need to take care of in the normal recursive case of the fractal tree method. Um, after we draw this line, now that we know the values of x2 and y2, we also need to make two new recursive calls, um, one for the branch that would go here and one for the branch that would go um, here. And so in order to do that, um, we already have x2 and y2, which is the starting point for both of those branches. So these two parameters are covered. We need to calculate a new length and the new length should be shorter than the um, current length, and I'll leave that up to you to decide how you want to scale that. Um, and we also need to calculate the new angle. And the thing to remember here is when calculating that new angle, it's relative to the horizontal. And so the left branch, um, which will be somewhat like this um, in terms of the edge of the ruler, let me use the marker instead. Um, the left branch will have an angle greater than theta, and the right branch will have an angle less than theta. Um, and how much greater and how much less than it is, is that branching angle referred to the lab, and that is also up to, to you to determine. Um, and try different values with these. Try different scaling factors for the length, try different branch angles, um, and get a sense of the different types of trees you can generate with that. Um, I hope this helps. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have more questions, um, and I look forward to seeing your, your fractal trees.